with Song Talk Radio. Welcome to Song Talk Radio, the show with songwriters talking to other songwriters about the craft of songwriting. We share tips, tools, and techniques, and together we all become better at writing songs. I'm your host, Neil Modi, and with me, my co-host, Phil Emery. How are you doing, Phil? I am here and present and ready to go and clicking all the buttons that needed to be clicked. Clickety clickety do. Okay. Please send your comments and questions to at Song Talk Radio on Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram, or feedback at songtalk.ca for the email, and we'll share your thoughts on the show. And please visit songtalk.ca to see the show post for this episode, to find links to resources we mention, and to download lyric and chord sheets to follow along with the songs that we feature. And uh, just before we get to tonight's guest, uh, a few uh, items. Uh, Once again, we have launched our Songwriting Challenge 2023 to uh, write a song in an unusual mode or a different mode than you're used to writing in. And uh, just... uh, uh, heads up that uh, you can check the website songtalk.ca and on the sidebar we do have a resource page for um, this uh, songwriting challenge with a few videos a few links to other um, resources on other websites and the first um, episode we did um, diving into two modes with uh, Jeff Allen Greenway so lots of stuff uh, there for our listeners to check out and of course um, once again, uh, as we did um, in the last two years with the songwriting challenges, we invite our listeners to participate and send in your answers to the challenge. And uh, as many as we get, we will feature episodes on the podcast where we feature your songs. Um, so it was, it was great fun the last couple of years um, getting your listener songs and uh, really cool to see all the different answers. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. Keep them, keep, them, keep them coming, guys. I think it'll be a great challenge. I'm certainly looking forward to it. Yeah, yeah. Have you started at all, Phil? Have you started thinking about it? Um, only very conceptually, but um, mm. I have done a bit of started to do a bit of research, and uh, okay. I think I've come up with the. I think I've come up with my strategy, and my strategy is to really hit the unique intervals of that particular mode. Yeah. So um, instead of just playing songs the way I normally, you know, I'll play chords and I come up with a melody, I will figure out what the uh, distinctive intervals of the particular mode are and then try to build a melody around that. So it'll be a little bit different than the way I normally work, which, of course, is the whole point of this thing. That's that's I, I dare to say that's bound to be a really hooky song. I would think, well, I hope so. Yeah, that'd be nice. Yeah, like like it's sort of thing where you have that repeating pattern or, or, or a number of different patterns that, that play with that interval. You know, that could be a really catchy thing. If yeah. You, if you work it well, like, yeah, that, that's a really cool approach. Yeah, so that's a really cool be pretty cool. Yeah. The only, the only, the only idea I've, I've come up with so far is to, is to think about, you know, I, 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 I think I may have to do some research on this, but I think lots of like classic rock songs are written in Mixolydian. Mm. with that flat seven the kind of bluesy yeah. thing yeah, so I, I want to see if i can pull off like a you know a 70s style classic rock song in, oh cool in mixolydian just 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 as an experiment to see you know if i, you can, should. If I, if I can keep my quirkiness out of it <laughs> do like yeah. a real bonafide you know so when people say 70s it's are you talking early 70s mid 70s or late 70s because late I, 70s is like elvis costello and yeah I don't know. I'm, I, I guess I'm thinking like maybe CCR or okay. maybe even Zeppelin or maybe even. Yeah, so early to mid. Yeah, Steve Miller type of thing. Oh, I, cool. I really don't know. <laughs> but um, well, something. something that. that would be great. That would be, that'd be yeah, really cool. Yeah. So, I don't know. But this is a thought I had. We'll see what happens if I start playing around with yeah. that and, <laughs> and see what happens. Um, and uh, you, you've got some uh, brimming on your brain. Otherwise, Phil, I do. What's, I've what's got up? a new toy. Ah, what's your new toy? Well, that's um, for those of you joining us on uh, video. Uh, you notice that my uh, background is well, background's not different. It's the same room, but it's just a different angle because I have a brand new computer. I got a Mac mm-hmm. Mini um, M2 Pro, mm-hmm. and I got the Pro because it has the extra ports on the back. And um, yeah, so I've been um, playing around with that, and uh, I was previously using a um, 21 inch 2011 iMac. Wow. And it's been fine, but it started to kind of, some of the productions I'm doing these days, it just 
no matter what I did, it would just, it, it would just choke. You just couldn't do them. Mm. So, uh, yeah, I just, um, set up the new machine. And of course, no matter how many adapters you have, and I have a bag of adapters going from one format to another, I still don't have the one I need. So I had yeah. to order the adapter. And of course, then you have to get a new USB hub and all, yeah. all the stuff, but it's, uh, yeah. Nothing like having a nice brand new computer. It's my first new computer I've gotten in many, many a year. Because I've wanted yeah. to get a... You were, what was it, 2011 and, last time? Those, those Macs do last a long time, don't they? They do. And um, it was still... I mean, it still works fine. It's just uh, with... You know, I, I have, I'm re remixing a bunch of the uh, Parkdale Hooker songs. Oh. And that has, you know, uh, multiple guitars and live drums and multiple vocals and when you start having plugins and all those tracks suddenly it was starting to cack out so yeah, that's my it's a little, a little thick yeah yes i will let cool. people know how it goes as i yeah, embark yeah. on this brand new um brand new portion of my studio but i have to get the camera at a better angle it's a little low at the moment mm, low. yeah it looks good though yeah yeah that, that, that's amazing it's uh, always fun to have a new toy and yeah. i'm sure your I'm sure your productions will shine because all, all we know, we know that you know, producers all they need is the right technology. And then <laughs> well, you probably need more plugins. I think that's one of the issues if you're recording at home. I don't know how many plugins you have, but there's probably you probably need more. Um, yeah, if you got thousands, you could always use thousands more. Well, that's true. <laughs> well, you had some uh, interesting technological. Um, challenges yourself yeah speaking of home studio things so I, I have i have a pair of um m audio studio file five inch studio monitors these are the first monitors i ever bought they're literally 20 20 plus years old and um and and and, and, and this is an interesting tidbit especially for people you know like that are in my situation where you're living in smaller uh spaces like i live in a condo there's not a lot of space to put you know spread things out and whatever so i've got my monitors on my desk and um last week uh i started hearing this like clicky clicky noise like tick, 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 coming from the left monitor and i was like what's going on here and i recorded it on my on my phone and i posted it to actually the one of the cakewalk uh facebook groups because it wasn't cakewalk related and software related but those guys are pretty helpful with anything studio related so i was like hey what do you guys think and they were and, and of course you know, troubleshooting 101, I didn't even think of this, but they were like, swap the monitors and see, you know, is it the cables? Is it your interface? Because I don't really, I don't really have anything else to to test with to swap out, you know, actual A for A kind of thing. And um, and 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 one of the guys there basically came to the conclusion, well, maybe it's time to upgrade his 20-year-old monitors and maybe they're on, on the fritz or whatever. So I started shopping around. I was on Long and McQuaid's website and I was looking at some Yorkville monitors. And I was reading the reviews, the user reviews, and and one of the people had said these monitors are they sound great and everything, but the magnetic shielding on them isn't so great because they make this clicky sound every time there's a Wi-Fi signal going through the room. Wow! Like, what is that? Where the clicky sound comes from? And sure enough, we changed our internet service provider just last last week, about the same time this clicky thing started, and now the modem, which was in the front hallway before, is now underneath my desk, literally <laughs> underneath this monitor that was clicking. Yikes. So there's all sorts of Wi-Fi going through this thing. <laughs> and and sure enough, when I swapped the monitors after that, then the right monitor, the one that was on the right, started clicking. So I know it's not the monitors. I know it's the, the, the Wi-Fi um, that's that's going through them. So my solution to this now is actually to order uh, desk clamping monitor stands because I want to get them off the desk. And, and lift them up about, you know, 12 to 18 inches. And that will, that will one, get the tweeters up to my ear level, which is what they say they're supposed to be. Oh, at. that's true. Um, and, and it'll get it a little bit further away from the modem, which will reduce, it won't, I don't think it'll eliminate the, the clicky noise. Could you get big but, magnets? Um, just big magnets? Or shielding, I just metal, I guess. I I don't know what magnets are going to do the rest of my equipment. <laughs> you know, you would want magnets. You want some kind of shielded metal i guess yeah and some kind of shielding i don't know i think we just put some distance i mean to be honest it, it, it's not really an issue while i'm listening to music it's only when the transport stops and, and there's there's right. quote unquote silence and you can hear a very faint thing going on it's like crickets for little bits of of working it might not be so bad but yeah. for a long night of mixing that would get pretty annoying it gets pretty annoying but yeah 
well, we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens. And worse comes to worse, I could put the modem in the living room and go back to using Wi-Fi on my desktop computer because I'm really digging the wired connection. It is blazing me it faster is than Wi-Fi. <laughs> Well, or you could actually, maybe it's time to buy some new monitors. Well, perhaps. perhaps. I mean, 20 years is, that's not bad. Yeah. I don't know if the new ones do have proper shielding from Wi-Fi signals. Just because oh, they, they know. Do. Like 20 years ago, there wasn't a lot of, you know, people didn't actually have like 17 devices in their yeah, small apartment. True. They all had Wi-Fi signals going all over the place. I don't think, I don't think there was Wi-Fi back then. There was, was, but it was, was kind of sketchy, and you had maybe a laptop that okay. was still better to plug in. Wired yeah, that's true. At the time, and because Wi-Fi was really slow at the time, and yeah, who knows? Uh, but some, I think you find it. But at least I found at least I found the problem. And and if you know you guys know anything about troubleshooting, that's the hardest part is that finding is out what the actual problem is. <laughs> <laughs> that the is solution's easy. Yeah. <laughs> finding <laughs> what the problem is that's the trouble. Well, well there you go. You, you just never know. You never know what's going to creep up next. Okay, on to the main event. Okay, tonight we are happy to welcome the return of singer-songwriter Gravely James. And here's a taste of his new song, Honey. I'm not the one to say it ain't going well, say it ain't going well, say it ain't going well. I'm not the one to say it ain't going well, but honey, I know that you can tell. And I don't need much, but honey, I need your love. Honey, I need your love. All right. uh, Gravely I James, a.k.a. Chris Madronic, is an Americana and folk singer-songwriter based in Niagara, Ontario. Growing up in Polk Colburn, Polk Colburn, Ontario, Madronic spent a decade playing trumpet with a variety of jazz bands, which inspired him to incorporate blues, soul, and rock into his art. Through these experiences, along with teaching himself guitar, he developed soulful songwriting and dynamic performance skills, which ultimately led him to Gravely James. As a solo artist, Gravely James has won many categories in the Niagara Music Awards, placed as a finalist in the Toronto Blues Society Talent Search, and the National Canadian Songwriting Competition in the Jazz Soul category. As of late, Gravely James has been recording with a full band, creating a larger roots rock sound. The band just opened up a sold-out show for David Wilcox and is ecstatic to release recent recording projects with John Harvey of Monster Truck and Justin Melly up at Chalet Recording Studio. Welcome back to Song Talk Radio, Chris Madronic. Hello, guys. How's it going? Good, Chris. Yeah, the last time you were on the show, I, th I believe, was uh, almost five years ago, just over five years ago, I think, 2018. Something like that, actually. Yeah, the in... birth of Gravely James was uh, your show, actually. Right on. Um, I think I had just sort of gotten that moniker like the night before or something not for your yeah. show i had been thinking about it for a long time but um right. yeah it was a milestone for sure it's a long time ago hey, well, what, what, what's the what's the reason the source behind that moniker why, why go with gravely james as opposed to just your name um well i didn't uh as a songwriter, I was writing all this music and I, I, I would get very, I still sometimes get embarrassed about what I released, but especially back then I found that as a developing artist, it's really scary to release something behind your name and, mm. uh, you know, and then it's not only, I, I just feel like as a person, you're under a microscope, everyone's sort of, you know, you, you sing about something and then people are like, Oh, do you mean this and that? And what I, mm. I just wanted to separate um, myself from my music. And so I could get away with murder essentially. And so, uh, that's, that's why I created a, a name, something I could sort of hide behind and be able to take it wherever I want and say whatever I want. Um, in the end, it, it comes back to me anyway, but it feels more comfortable as far as the name's concerned. It's literally, it's literally just my mom's maiden name and my dad's name combined. So I was, it's not too fancy, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, I <laughs> just, uh, I wasn't going to go with like Chris Mercury or this or that. I just wanted something completely different, but something mm -hmm. that still sounded familiar to me. So that's sort of where it came from. 
That, that, that's really interesting. That, 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 that's kind of akin to this this thing that actually did this for last year's songwriting challenge. We're just talking about songwriting challenge. Mm -hmm. That you, you you kind of start a song in third person if it's if it's kind of hard or embarrassing or or whatever, yeah. right? You just start it in the third person and you put a little distance between you and the material. Yeah. So you have to tell the truth and not, you know, <laughs> you yeah. not feel like you're being like you know, persecuted for it, you know? Yeah, it, it, exactly. Right. And then, and then you can flip it back to first person afterwards. But <laughs> yeah, it, but it, it's, 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 it's akin to the same thing as, as putting a little distance between you and your art, which is, yeah. which is kind of a That's cool exactly thing. exactly it. Yeah. So thinking back to um, when you were back on our show way back when, um, how has the how has your songwriting process changed? Do you think it's a good question? I don't know if it. Uh, I'm not sure if it's changed or not. <laughs> it probably has. Um, I don't know. Like I think it even so, even that recording I just sent you there that was from two 2020. That was in the middle of COVID. I released that, and now I'm releasing a whole whole different beast now like that was a very stripped down sort of uh recording that whole album was live off the floor and stripped down and i guess now i'm i uh now that i'm with a band and we're playing gigs like opening for david wilcox i think my writing is definitely um it, it imagines myself in front of that crowd and that ha has definitely changed my songwriting instead of, um, you know, being trapped indoors during COVID in a bedroom. I think, uh, I think just, just being in front of people and seeing what sort of lights them up. I feel like that is sort of made me think about big power chords and this and that, you know, I mean, like sort of more, um, theatrical stuff. Um, but I still haven't veered away from, from that intimate stuff too, but it's, I think I've thought more about playing with a band and that has sort of incorporated into my songwriting and stuff, stuff by myself and, um, and sort of, um, and, and, and creating sort of, I think, think I've been thinking more electric lately. Hmm. Okay. Fun. <laughs> yeah. So when so when you're when you're writing a song, you're thinking about you're thinking about you're thinking about like sep different parts that the band is playing. I, I remember last time you were talking about horns a lot because you are a trumpet player. Yeah. At, at heart, right? And yeah. um, so you're thinking about like the horn parts and things like that, or yeah, or, so or, or, or do or do you develop a song like guitar and vocal first, and then and then arrange it for band. Um. Yeah, I'd say it's 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 sort of both ways. Like I find that for my my mind, it sort of goes to a lot of places when I'm starting a tune. Um, but I feel as of late, like my guitar playing has sort of thought, oh yeah, like Pat's gonna like play some wicked drums on this, and mm. and uh, Chase is gonna rip on. Like I, I think that way, and I'm like, okay. But what's it about? What's this tune about? And I start sort of humming something, and then it might be like, da, 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 you know, and then I, and then I just I'm like, oh, and then, and then I usually just pawn, sit on that for a bit, and then, uh, and then something might happen in my life that sort of is like inspiring. Maybe I get really pissed one day or, you know, at work or like I might, you know, or, um, you know, or I'm sad or I'm really like in love and happy, you know, like I, you know, I just sort of feel like once that structure is there, I just sort of ponder on it. And then, then the, uh, the events will take place that sort of triggers the actual idea for the, the content I find that's been lately anyway. Does that take a long time? Sorry. Sorry? Go ahead, go ahead, Phil. Oh, is um are the other band members um sort of assisting in the writing, or is it mostly you bringing your ideas in and um they execute them? Fair, fairly much that way at the moment. Um I uh yeah, I, I feel feel because I've been a songwriter on my own for so long, um it it generally is that way, but but musically, we sort of all contribute as well. But as far as lyrics and stuff like that, it's I usually have a full idea before I come to them, which um, I it's not egotistical. It's just the way that, that uh, it just comes out. 
Um, but I would really like to, to like open that up more. And this has been a new process for me. I'm coming from being like a solo songwriter, um, acoustic player to this new, new project. And, uh, and so I'm still learning that process. It's, it's mm-hmm. still a, a work in progress, I guess. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm, I'm in a band and, um, and our, our, our first, our first album was just me and the, and the, and the lead singer who was a singer songwriter playing by himself acoustic guitar and all, all those most of the songs he wrote as as, as his producer we co-wrote one song yeah. um, on, on the first album because it was kind of half finished when he brought it in the studio yeah and then and then since then like i've written songs by myself he's written more songs by himself a bass player contributed a song to the to the thing one time this this is one i don't know if it's our best song but this is one of our most interesting songs i i just wrote a chorus and i brought it right. to him and I said, hey, this is what I'm thinking. This is the theme. This is the idea. Here's my chorus. And then he basically wrote the verses. And then we threw together a bridge together. And it was kind of, you know, and, and then last summer, we actually got together, the three of us, and and wrote a song together from scratch, which was something we'd never done before. So it can take on yeah, so many different so many different forms. But I, I do find in general that when one one person in the band brings some something of an idea, whether it's a roughly finished song or whether it's a kernel of a song or some some kind of anchor yeah that gives, that gives anchors, the band something to work with yeah some I, I think um the other thing is like you know so i think there's merit to both ways too for sure but um i feel that the person who's thought of the idea to get that person to fully conceptualize what that idea is first before getting other people to smack away at it i think that's important because i feel like some of my best tunes have been written very quickly because just the emotion is there and it i'm just like when i get the idea i want to get as much of that even if it's sloppy out onto the table so that the full idea is conceptualized in that moment and you don't lose that moment you want to sort of capture as much as you can and then um and then having like people come in and say, Hey, this doesn't make a lot of sense. What do you mean by that? Hey, what, why don't you put this here then? And I'm like, Oh, brilliant. You know what I mean? That, that conceptualizes what I was trying to say much better or, um, or vice versa. Same thing. Like, I, I think like if I can get as much of like, if, if we're writing a tune together and you sort of write this anchor and, and you're sort of in this mind frame and you sort of got everything out on the table, then we have lots to work with. And, and as an outsider, then I can sort of see what you're going for. And then I see what kind of loses me as well. And then, you know, and then we work from there, you know, um, I think there's that. And then there's also like three people writing together and, and, you know, that there's a lot of merit to that as well. Um, but both sides, I think, you know, um, lots of ways to contribute. Yeah. Yeah. Well, like you say, as long as you keep, as long as you keep something rolling. Exactly. It's, 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 it's like you say, just just get the thing out and and get a draft done. Yeah. The, the way the way you're talking a minute ago was, you know, like you 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 come up with a, a little melody, yeah. and then you know then you think about something that that you were emotional about, and then come back. And it made it sound like it's a bit more of a longer process sometimes. So, or, yeah, or do, you, do you find that your best songs are the ones you write quickly? But the are there best others songs that are the ones awesome? that I write quickly. I think. Like I, I think. Um, I think if you're lucky, like, I feel like you write a whole bunch or I feel like I've written so much crap day after day. And then just like you'll walk through the door and it's just like, I don't work tomorrow, you know, like, I don't. And then a whole song comes off that and it's like, you know, and um, I, I think I think the best some of the best stuff I've written has been. Re- I think, honey, I wrote in like 40 minutes or something like that because it was nice. uh, an emotional state. I had this lick and just boom, just sort of just came off the hop. And then other stuff you sit on forever and you don't think it's ever even going to become anything. And then years down the road, it's like, oh, there it is, you know, or you have your bandmates look at it and they're like, oh, you can do this. You know what I mean? No, I I know exactly what you mean. But the um, the the songs that you write quickly, do you go back and edit them? Yes and no. Um, yes and no. Yes, yes and no. I don't think I did. Well, 
Well, did take for example honey, like you say, you wrote it in forty minutes. Was, honey, did, you come, did you revisit it after that? Yeah, I did. You know, in fairness, I did. Um, but the emotions were there. Um, you know, like it, it, when I say I wrote the whole thing, it, yeah, it's never always like I find it's never the whole thing. Really, I guess you've called me on that. And that that's totally <laughs> that's totally true. I don't definitely. Um, but I think all the emotions are out, and I think the general structure is there. And, you know, I might write things very simply, you know, or, um, you know, but I think most of it was there with honey. It was pretty close. I think it was pretty yeah, close. Yeah. yeah, which is all I'm getting at. Cause then yeah. after that, it's, it's, it's tweaking, right? It's, yeah, of it's course. looking it's after fun. those, looking after the detail level. Yeah. There could be a much you know. better word that explains a lot more here or something. Yeah, like that, you know, exactly. Or maybe this, maybe twist this melody this way instead and see. Yeah if that expresses it better or whatever. Absolutely. Okay. So let's talk about Honey. What was the process with this? Was this just uh, futzing about with the guitar and then coming up with an idea? Yeah, I think I think it was very similar to what I said. I think I was playing around with this. Uh, actually, I was playing on mandolin um, when I started writing this song. And then my sister decided to take her man- mandolin back and so what I decided to do is uh, tune my guitar to a really awkward open G. Like it's the, the way the guitar is tuned to is like a um, as if you're playing an actual G chord on it. Like if you're mm-hmm. to bring that out, it's to the uh, exact intonation that like a G would be strum. So it's putting your guitar through hell. Um, but I started playing with that and playing with that open tuning to feel like a mandolin. Um, and then uh, I got that sort of thing. And then, um, and then COVID happened and uh, you know, times got tough and I was broke as hell at the time oh. too. That never helps. Um, mm-hmm. But, uh, and I just decided to write about the uh, human condition, you know, um, and, and uh, it was a, was a tough time and I got a lot of good music out of it. So mm-hmm. I'm thankful for that. Cool. Okay, why don't we take a listen to the complete song, uh, Honey, uh, by Gravely James, and then we'll talk about it some more. Sounds good. I'm not the one to say it ain't going well, say it ain't going well. Say it ain't going well I'm not the one to say it ain't going well But honey, I know that you can tell And I don't need much, but honey, I need your love Honey, I need your love Honey, I need your love I don't need much, but honey, I need your love. Tell me, honey, ain't that enough? Ain't that enough? Ain't that enough? When money's tight and times are tough. Ain't that enough? Ain't that enough? Honey, we'll work it through. Work through the rough I can hear your pain, honey Hear it in your throat Hear it in your throat Hear it in your throat I can hear your pain, honey Hear it in your throat Your murmur hushed on the telephone Ain't that enough? And times are tough Ain't that enough? Ain't that enough? Honey We'll work it through Work through the rough Ain't that enough, ain't that enough When money's tight and 
are tough. Ain't that enough? Ain't that enough, honey? We'll work it through, work through the rough. Nice. Great stuff. Thank you. Su- super catchy. Yeah. <laughs> what, do you, what do you think of the song, Phil? It's it's interesting. It sounds a bit almost like a song they refer to as a traditional song. Yeah. Like it sounds like I wouldn't expect someone of this, of our vintage to write this. It feels <laughs> like it is something that is just, oh, it's just traditional, um, which I think is great because it's hard to sort of do that authentically. Mm. But you did a really nice thing is in your verse structure, you had um, da 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 And then you actually had, I think, like four bars of, of just kind of music comping which kind of just gave it a little bit of a difference as opposed to going right into the next line, which, you know, a lot of blues does. And it just kind of gave it that nice little, uh, that nice little difference. Um, but yeah, like just a perfect little tune, you know, it's, um, and, and so pure of, um, concept, you know, mm-hmm. didn't get too flowery you didn't you know, try to be too clever with, uh, with lyrics and it's very honest, which is, which is a, t- a difficult thing to do, I think. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's a big compliment. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's, there's a lot of things I like about this song. The um, so the, the 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 phrasing, the rhymes, the melodies, um, and it, it, it's interesting. It's interesting to me that the title is called "Honey," because the top of the chorus, where you know the money notes are and your melody really climbs, is "Ain't That Enough," and I'd be tempted to call the song "Ain't That Enough." But honey's honey's an interesting choice because honey is the one word that repeats a lot. Like it, it comes up almost everywhere. And I don't know if he did this on purpose, but one thing I noticed, not on the first listen of this, but on the on the subsequent listen of this and looking at the lyric sheet, which, by the way, listeners, songtalk.ca, see the show post, the lyric sheet will be up there. Um, honey, there's no other E rhymes in this song going well going well you can tell i need your love ain't that enough tight t- uh, you know hear it in your throat on the telephone there's no other ease there's nothing that rhymes with honey so uh, honey really stands out in those in those ways so it's still a cool title <laughs> right but I, I don't know i don't know how much i would consideration when the fact that honey doesn't rhyme with anything else in the song no i i um I think I gave it a lot of consideration what I call this song. I can't remember where I was at when I actually decided <laughs> that was going to be called honey. Um, but it, yeah, definitely sticks out like a sore thumb, the honey. Mm-hmm. And, um, and I think, I think it gives more address to the subject, I guess. Um, as opposed to, you know, like the, the subject being the person I'm talking to honey, you know, um, and I also found I was playing a lot with honey, like when I was actually singing it. Um, yeah, I think it could just as well be, uh, ain't that enough. Like, I think I almost named it, um, honey brackets. Bracket. Ain't that enough. Oh no, yeah. don't do that. We all, but, we all love brackets um, in song titles. Yeah, but <laughs> I went with honey. I don't know why. But no, no, no. I, 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 think, I, think, I think it's a great title. And and you know what? I mean, and here's the other interesting thing about, about the lyrical content, right? Because the uh, the honey's the the sweet side of everything else that's going on True. in the song. It, it, it ain't going well. Times are tough. Yeah. Money's tight. I can hear your pain. Yeah. But you're still my honey. Yeah. <laughs> right. And so <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 it's the sweet to the sour. I guess so. Yeah. <laughs> right. Right. Which, which is, which is really, which is really interesting. And it's also, I also find that the song is very, like you say, Phil, like it's very, it's very traditional. It's, it's simple. It's not so simple in the structure and it's not so simple in the melodies maybe. And, and, and the kind of the melodic and guitar interest and all that sort of stuff. But conceptually it's quite simple and straightforward. And 
And there's a lot, you know, you, re- you repeat lines verbatim, say it ain't going well, say it ain't going well, say it ain't going well. I need your love, honey, I need your love, honey, I need your love. <laughs> like, boom, 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 right? Which it, it still works, right? But at the same time, it's not, and, and maybe that this is going back to what you're saying, Phil, is that it's an older style as opposed to a newer style, which would elect to be a little more introspective, a little more intellectual, a little more mm. clever, a little more something you know, to put to put much more st- much more specifics in the story, because right now it's 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 so wide open to just about anybody's experience who's had a rough time and has someone to share that experience with that. You know, have we all you know been where money's tight and times are tough? Sure. <laughs> you know, so it, 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 there, there, there's a certain there's a certain kind of purity um, to that, which is which is really quite nice that you that you avoided the i don't want to call it a trap but you've avoided the trap of of being kind of you know clever and and putting so much stuff into it because it's pretty short too it's like three, three minutes, minutes maybe three minutes yeah. yeah i really um i think other songwriters would would uh, have different approaches than i do but um i really believe in complex simplicity like i know that sounds really um you know, far out, but I really love tunes that communicate very simply and are very on the button and really just share that emotion and, um, and like really, but like have a lot of depth behind that, you know, like, um, you know, it's, I, I think, um, I don't know. I think just being able to put someone else in your shoes is, is, is the goal. And I find that sometimes it's just like, sometimes it just gets too complicated or whatever. I just, sometimes I'll like it right on the button. You know, I feel like uh, I really love the song simply because it's super simple right on the button. I can think of exactly where I was when I wrote it, you know? Um, and then there's a difference between simplistic and simple. Yeah. Right, like when you say complex, simpl- complex simplicity is still rich and it's yeah, still absolutely full, it's like has some depth to it. Like I too, I think, I think, um, like I strive to find a, a complicated subject and make it and and make it bring simplicity to it, so it's digestible. Maybe yeah, like can, can how do you express it with the fewest words that still exactly. get that still get the message across? That's yeah. that's being simple as opposed to. Yeah, being too too much verbiage or too much stuff yeah. around it, right? Yeah. You show it to a grade five kid, and maybe it gets crossed. So maybe not. I don't know. <laughs> and, 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 and and your melodies do have a very sing songy, almost nursery rhymey kind of quality. Yeah. To them, da, 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 da. like it's very, you know. Yeah, that sounds traditional. What a great tune. Yeah, which which would makes it yeah super super old school. I appreciate all. <laughs> <laughs> so Chris, what is um coming up next for you? Um, well, I just got off the show playing opening for Dave Wilcox on Friday. Um, so I, I'm taking some time to digest a little bit, but <laughs> I just recorded all this music. Like I, I did uh I did that I did a tune with Monster Truck or sorry, John Harvey of Monster Truck, which is much heavier. Um, mm. And then I did a whole bunch of recording up in Chalet uh, around uh, in Uxbridge. Um, and so I'm figuring out what what my next steps are with that. I'm certainly playing a lot with my band, but uh, there is a lot of music to be released on the horizon. I just just try to figure out how to do it. You know, uh, that's like the other half of it all. Right. You got this beautiful s- stuff you're so excited about, but you're yeah, like, yeah. I just want to give this thing wings. So that's, that's sort of where I'm at trying to figure out how to do that. I know I do have a music video on the way, nice. um, or one of them. Um, but, uh, yeah, that's, what's next is, is figuring out how to play bigger shows with my band and release this music so we can do that. Amazing. Great Amazing. stuff. Yeah, we will definitely keep a lookout for all that stuff. And um, again, check out the show posts. We have links to um, to Gravely James uh, music stuff. And uh, you can you can check it out if you're digging what you hear, which you should. <laughs> Alrighty. 
Okay, and uh, I think that is all the time we have um, here on Song Talk Radio. Special thanks to uh, Gravely James, and um, just as a shout out, where where where's the best place for our listeners to hear more of your music? Uh, well, you can go to my Spotify, but give us a follow there. Um, that would be great because we will be releasing a lot through Spotify, Amazon, um, sorry, uh, Apple Music, and all of the all the typical streaming places. You can follow follow me everywhere there. You can follow my Instagram, and um, and a lot is kept up on my site as well. So uh, anything helps. And I, 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 as I understand it. Pre-saving on Spotify and Apple and all that sort of stuff. I don't know how Spotify does it. Does, does that actually help a lot? I think it helps the algorithm a lot because um, if you can get a lot of pre-saves before something's released, I think there's a much bigger chance of something being playlisted, which mm. is ultimately the goal. Um, so as I'm releasing stuff, you guys can pre-save it. That pre-save would. It. That would mean the world to me. And pre-saving uh, does not cost you anything. No, just a click. It's literally a click. <laughs> but uh, but it's it's validation for Spotify, and I, I think it, it gets more of those curators on that tune when you when you send it out. Um, so that would that would be a tremendous help if, if you enjoy this stuff. Yeah, yeah. It, it's a great way to support local singer songwriters and, and other artists. You know, is to pre-save this stuff. And really, if you don't like it after that, you can always unhard it afterwards. <laughs> 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 okay, and we want to hear from you, our listeners. So please send us your comments, Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram to at Song Talk Radio, or send us an email, feedback at songtalk.ca. And be sure to check out our YouTube channel for live performance videos and full episodes. Subscribe today to the Song Talk Radio podcast on your favorite podcast provider, and look to our website, our resources page, to find products, books, and web services we mention on the show. And please visit us our next monthly Song Talk meetup, whether you're in Toronto for our in-person meetups or any anywhere in the world for our online meetups. It's free to join on meetup.com and free to attend. Bring a song and a lyric sheet and get constructive feedback from other songwriters. Stop by songtalk.ca for the link. Uh, you can follow me at neilmodi.com. You can follow Phil. philemory.ca And Gravely James, what's the, what's the best social media platform? Probably Instagram. You can just follow, but everything is just Gravely James. It's, uh, you'll find me in, on all platforms that way. Awesome stuff. Uh, thanks for listening, everybody. Be sure to stop by the website, songtalk.ca, to browse past shows and find out how you can be a guest. Thanks for tuning in and keep on writing. Thank keep, you, gentlemen. Keep on writing. Really writing, keeping, <laughs> writing the songs of the keep, keep something. Keep something for Phil. Yeah. Put too many buttons to press. Keep on pressing buttons. Congrats yeah. opening for David Wilcox. I mean, holy crap. That's huge. Yeah. Oh, it was fun as heck, man. And like, we're all. Where, where, where was that? Where did you play? Uh, the Moose and Goose in Niagara. Nice. Um, so it was okay. also a hometown show. And yeah. uh, we've we've seen David Wilcox so many times when we <laughs> band. And it was just, it just, it was such, I don't know. It meant so much to us because we've just seen mm-hmm. him play Canal Days, our local festival, so many times. So um just really cool to meet them and uh, i was a packed house it was like 650 people or something wow. like that it was oh, wow awesome. yeah it's amazing so cool. it was electric <laughs> it was so fun <laughs> honestly it was incredible that's, congratulations that's awesome. man that's awesome. thank yeah, you congrats. that's really cool well deserved yeah it's, bigger things to come that's amazing thank you very much um yeah, this is, uh, it's, it's great. This is still going. Like it's been over five years, eh? Like it's, uh, it's going to be 10. Next It'll year. be 10 this November oh. for us. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Well, who's Ten your next years. guest? What's that? Who's your next guest? Oh, geez. I forget. Let me look at the schedule here. After gravely James. Oh, Jenny Millard. Oh, cool. Singer songwriter, I think ish. Something. Oh, familiar. <laughs> We go, we go through a lot of guests, so we burn through, yeah. yeah. through a guest a week. So yeah, that's true. There you go. Yeah, a lot of people, a lot of great. Everyone's a great guest. Everyone. <laughs> right on. Alrighty. Means, all right. Well, have yourself a great night, and uh, say hi to Niagara we'll Falls. We'll send you an email when uh, the show is posted. So if you could share it with your 
social folks, that would be great. Oh. And if you could um, find that recording of you and send it to us, that would be awesome. Although your audio was fine. Yeah. Oh, what's oh, okay. oh this one? Like yeah, the... yeah, yeah. When you close oh, the okay. Zoom meeting, it'll it'll prompt you to save, or it'll save it automatically in like your Zoom folder. Oh, I see. Yeah. So okay. just get that file and pop it over to Phil. You got it. Okay. That cool. would be awesome. Right on. Well, thanks again, guys. You have a great yeah. evening. You Thank too. You, you too. Take care. Cheers, Thanks. man.